Mr. President, I'm pleased to present for the honorary doctorate degree in Humane Letters, Mr. Fuad Mustafa Makhzoumi, <laughs> Executive Chairman of Future Group Holdings and founder of the Makhzoumi Foundation. Mr. Makhzoumi, I have the pleasure to present for the honorary doctorate degree in Humane Letters a man of true distinction, a man whose notable accomplishments have cemented him as one of Lebanon's global figures. Coming from a humble background, his road to prosperity was one he paved with hard work and unrelenting faith. Initially showing interest in engineering, he took his passion and found ways to successfully implement it in the field of business. Upon a number of fruitful business prospects, he was confident enough to take his learning to his cherished Lebanon, where he thrived in giving back to the people of his country. After graduation, he was ready to settle down and start a family with lifelong partner, Mrs. May Makhzoumi. We salute you, Mrs. Makhzoumi. The honesty, compassion, and empathy, empathy in the relationship perfectly reflected their work ethic. Fuad Mahzoumi is a man of many titles, among them a lucrative businessman, respected public figure, generous philanthropist, and loving family man, fully dedicated to his country and its youth. Mr. Mahzoumi was born in Lebanon in 1952. He spent his childhood in his birthplace, receiving his preliminary and secondary education at the renowned International College of Beirut, IC. He then went on to take this teaching to Michigan Technological University, where he graduated with a master's degree in chemical engineering. It was in the same year of 1975 in which he took his first step to career prosperity by going to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where he eventually proved himself worthy of leading the Future Pipe Industries Group, a company that has seen global triumph over the years. He is also a profound investor with numerous successful investments under his belt. Mr. Mahzoumi is the recipient of many, many honors. He was appointed a commander of the Order of Merit of the Republic of Italy in 2013 and received the Socrates Oxford Annual Award for 2014 by the European Business Assembly, EBA, in Vienna. Mr. Makhzoumi has received, as well, many other awards and trophies, to name but a few. International Desalination Association, National Press Club of Canada, Foundation Ottawa, Canadian Lebanese Community, Edmonton, Islamic Lebanese Canadian Association, the Arab Organization for Advanced Development, and one can go on and on and on. Mr. Makhzoumi, at the very embodiment of distinction tempered by genuine humility, a philanthropist, a leader, an educator, and a community figure. Mr. Mahzoumi, congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Mahzoumi, by the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees of the Lebanese American University and the decision of the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters.
Mr. Dr. Fouad Mahzoumi. I invite you to join the company of scholars of the Lebanese American University and assign to you all the rights and duties, privileges, and responsibilities which the honor implies. In witness whereof, I give you this diploma signed and sealed with the seal of the university. Congratulations. Thank you. Members of the LAU board, members of the International Advisor, Academic and Executive Committee, Dr. Joe Jabra, Vice Presidents and Administrators, Deans and Faculties, Parents, my wife May, my daughter Tama Camelia, my granddaughter uh, May, the daughter of my late son Rami, and my sister Lena. My fellow graduates, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I would like to express my most sincere appreciation to the LAU Board of Trustees, Academic and Executive Committee for granting me this doctorate degree, which I appreciate very much. I'm honored and humbled. I have to say that my knowledge of Dr. Jabra when he first came to the country you get the feeling that you are dealing a man of really a big gravitas and vision. And since we've met, it looks like the chemistry clicked. And what we said that whatever we can do for the LAU will be very happy to do that. For you that are graduating, I went through the same story like what you are going to today. I come from a middle class family. My, all my family was part of the government. My great-grandfather was Khalid ibn al-Walid al-Makhzoumi, who defended Islam and the state. And my great, my, my uncle, Fuad Makhzoumi, who I was named after him, sacrificed his life on the 13th of November, 1943, when we were defending for the liberty of Lebanon and the independence that happened 10 days later. <laughs> we, I come from a family that my father was a civil servant. My mother was trying very hard in order to make us go to school. The only thing they prov provided us is to go to a good schools. When I graduated, I wanted to be a doctor. Then the last day before I actually entered the UB, I decided medicine is not for me. So I went into engineering. My mother did not and my father did not have money, so they borrowed money from uh, my uncle who sent me to the States. And that's why I had to finish school in two and a half years to do my master's degree undergraduate because there was no money with us. Came back in 1975, and the war has started. So I went through the same thing that you are all going through right now. The region was definitely not doing very well. The price of oil was basically barely $30, and unemployment in Lebanon was very high. So I went to Saudi Arabia, like too many of our uh, Lebanese uh, friends, went to Saudi Arabia and I saw a vision. What you are learning today and your degree is half of your success story. Your family, your school, your university, your community in Lebanon will provide you with 50% of your success story because this is the foundation that you should be building on. But you have to take risks, you have to make the right choices. I went to Saudi Arabia at a time when Lebanon was 75, everybody would love to live in Lebanon. Yet I went there because I realized that the opportunities were there. I'm a chemical engineer, but I had the opportunity to work in a pipe company, which with time we were able to buy and to become one of the largest groups in the world with 17 factories around the world. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that take the risk, but do a calculated risk. You have the, the knowledge, 
you have the experience. So just take the risk when you can see it, it's coming. In 1992, after the Taif Agreement, I figured that some of our success story has to be brought back to the country. So what we did is that I came back, I started the Future Security Company, which has a thousand employees today. The idea was to bring these young men and women to take them from the streets and to try to give them some uniform and some kind of stability and dignity in their life. 1993, we are the largest pipe company in the world. So we figured with the reconstruction of Lebanon, we need to transfer some of these technologies, which is the fiberglass composites material, into the Lebanon. So we established a factory in Akkar, the most underprivileged area. We had a 1,000 people making benefit out of it. Unfortunately, the laws in this country, they do not encourage investments. So we had to mothball it in 2010 with the intentions of trying to move it forward with the reconstruction of Syria when it comes. Then in 1996, I've realized when I went around to schools in Lebanon that really the computer literacy was not something that you can see in public schools. So we decided with my wife, May, to start a foundation called the Makhzumi Foundation in order to target that exactly that part, what is needed. Then we realized as much as we can teach them, this will not generate income for them. So we started with vocational training. Then we realized that even if we teach them with vocational training, they need a minimum capital to start. So we started with microcredit program. Today, there are about two and a half million services that this foundation has done. We have over 660,000 Lebanese that made benefit out of it. We have 9,000 families, they own their own businesses. This is what the community is all about because we need to empower the Lebanese to make sure that they have the dignity and not to be drawn into fundamentalist movements. <laughs> then we've realized that this is not even enough because at the end of the day, we have a future. Today, we graduate 35,000 Lebanese. We barely can find between eight to 9,000 jobs for them. So every year, we are adding close to 20,000 people that are unemployed because our economy, our infrastructure does not handle all of this. But remember, we have wealth in the sea. We have the oil and gas, which is our forum, Forum for National Dialogue. What we have done, we are starting now a campaign for you, the young men and women of this country, to make sure that this is your future, this is your wealth, make sure that you protect it by forcing transparency and forcing regulations that's going to protect you. The idea is not to allow politicians to try to take them away from you. This is your future and you have to defend it. As far as the business is concerned, we today operate in 17 countries around the world. We believe that making money out of a country is not good enough. You have to make sure that the people that you're working with in the community feels that it is your right because you're giving them something in return. That's why my late son Rami, <laughs> believed in the corporate social responsibility. And he made sure that in every country we operate, we try to work with the community to make sure that we can support it. It varies in different things. In Lebanon, you know, because of the, our involvement, it becomes, you know, all the functions is there. But in other countries, we work with the Boy Scouts, we work with the community. In, in Jakarta, we work with the, with the local community, with the mosques and all of that. We need to show the people that we are, their concern is exactly what we believe in. Because at the end of the day, it is not important to make money is important to try to reinvest into your community to feel that these people are all with us. This is what I hope and I will pray that for most of the Lebanese that have been successful around the world, no matter how much money you have, how many degrees you have, how many decorations you have, in the world you are all the time labeled as the Lebanese with a foreign citizenship. This is the only country that we can all be proud of we appreciate all the countries that let us live there and work there, but the bottom line, we are Lebanese. We have to work together. We need to go forward beyond the, the extremists that we see. We want to make sure that we work, because at the end of the day, when I see 65,000 employment visas are applied for by our young men and women every year, 
That means that we are running out of talents, we're running out of youth, at the end of the day, a country without you basically will become a very old country and has no future. I wish you all the best. I hope we, as a group, we will be very happy to work with you in the foundation, in the Beirutiyat, which we do the Ramadaniyat, as you see around the country. We have an office that we tend to help people to find jobs. Last year, we were able to find 800 jobs for newly graduates in the country and outside the country. Whatever we can work with you, feel free to contact us because at the end of the day, we are all one, we are all Lebanon, and Lebanon is one. Thank you very much.